Hi my friend, in this video we're going to be making an underground tech house song inspired by Mal P's song, Beats for the Underground. And we're going to find out if we can do this in about 5 to 6 hours of in-studio time using the 80-20 rule of tech house song creation. What you're listening to right now is the track that we'll actually be working on and what you're looking at right now is the Ableton project file that we'll be working on. We're going to be going over everything in the order that I actually created it so that you can kind of follow along when you're building out your own tracks. So we're going to start with the drums one by one, then go to the bass layers one by one, then all the melodic elements one by one, including the vocals. And then we'll be going over kind of the arrangement after we've built out the song vertically, created the loop. We're going to then stretch it out horizontally and actually build out this entire song and go over kind of the effects, ear candy, and all that kind of stuff to make sure the arrangement is interesting and kind of changes up and is fun over time. All in all, it did take me about five hours to build this out over the course of four or five days. And if finishing songs fast like that is something that you'd like help with, I've created a completely free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that I use to completely finish one song like this every single week. Visit the link that's in the description or on screen right now to grab the ultimate song finishing toolkit for free. And with that said, let's jump into this. All right, all right, all right. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on the kick drum. So this is what it sounds like. And the pattern here is just classic four on the floor. So one, two, three, four, nothing too crazy. So we'll move on to the sound design where things get a little bit more interesting. So what I've done here is I went to this actual reference track. So I have Malpy's Beats for the Underground track in my Ableton project file. And what I did was looking around the intro or the outro of the track, found an area where the, the kick was more or less isolated. So not a lot of bass playing or other melodic instruments, but you can kind of isolate it out. So if you're doing this, you're gonna wanna look for extended mixes usually. So we'll have the intro and outro and make sure that there's no like kind of high pass filter or low pass filter, or anything weird going on with the kick drum uh, when you're isolating it, which is nice to have the extended mix so you can look at the beginning and end. Um, what I've done next is just dropped it into this Ableton um, Simpler device, you can see it right here. And I set up a bunch of macros to make things a little easier and quicker. So the um, the filter envelope is already set to max here. And then I just drag down the filter frequency. If you hear how it originally sounded, a lot of like hi-hats and some kind of like ringing. And then I just drag this down to where it kind of sounded good to me. Other than that, I did drag up the velocity to volume a little bit. I think default is around like 25% or so, just kind of makes the, the sound kind of hitting hit a little bit harder, I'm finding. And then I added a little bit of one knob saturation to kind of fill up the sound a bit. And then I dialed back the output a little bit as well. I did adjust the decay, sustain, and release a little to kind of tighten up the sound. Um, and then also adjusted the high shelf, which is over here. Just kind of rolling off a little bit of the high end, but not using um, like a hard uh, low pass filter, which is a little bit more subtle and a little bit more natural sounding. If you want like any of these kind of like little little racks and presets and samples, uh, there'll be a link in the description where you can grab the project files for this video and all the project files that I've done in the past and I'll be dropping on a weekly basis. You can extract anything, all these kind of things. Other than that, the main thing is, like I mentioned in a few videos before, the main things are to use a reference track so that you can get select the right sounds, sort of select the right volumes. Uh, and that's really going to kind of get you like, get you that 80-20% of the way there. So what I have here is that Mal P song set up on a reference track here. I turned it off, but I set the S key to be able to flick between it. So that is flick between. Kind of on time, if you can. To get an idea of the right sound selection and getting the volumes right. Those are going to really be the main keys there. So once that was done, let's see if I added anything else to this. It should all be, that's pretty much it. But it's everything is built up into this Ableton rack right here. So that's basically that. And then next up, I did the open hi-hat, which sounds like this. And so we take a look at the uh, MIDI, the pattern here. It's just the, that kind of offbeat classic sound. And there are three layers that I have going on here. So the first one that I did was this layer right here. So let me just turn everything off slowly. And so what, again, the idea was to flick back and forth between the reference track and mine. 
to try to find the right sound and get the volume done in the right way. Uh, I've had a kind of a hard time setting it up, so, so this was like the first sound that I kind of got, got somewhere there. Then what I did was add it in this layer here. And so if we take a look, this is right here. It's a similar kind of idea. So if I zoom in, what I did was I found a section of the song, and I think it was the intro where the hi-hat was playing in the Mal P song, extracted it, dropped it into here, played with the filter envelope a little bit, uh, and then added in a bit of uh, saturation to kind of fill up the sound, played with the decay sustain release to kind of tighten it up a little bit, um, and then dropped a little bit of the high shell just to, uh, no, I didn't do that. I just rolled off a bunch of the lows, and then I used one of this one knob, sash, uh, one knob set transient designer to tuck in the sustain a little bit. So again, tightening up the sound a bit. Actually, no, this is going over the entire hi hat rack. So let me come back to that in a moment. When I was listening to this, if uh, we listen back and forth, I'll flip back and forth like how I was actually doing it. I was kind of hearing this like high end that my hi hats weren't really hitting, so I added this additional track. Let me let me show you what that sounds like. And so what this was, if we go over to here, I just found another hi hat sound. I uh, dialed in the start time to make it a little bit tighter. Uh, I dropped the frequency down a little bit, but this was actually low pass or high pass. Just kind of getting rid of a bunch of the low end, so I'm mostly just trying to add some high end with this this track here. I added the transition up just a little bit um, to kind of make, get that kind of high end kind of sound, and then uh, dialed in that fade out, so it was a little bit more, I guess, smooth. So we listen back and forth. A little bit closer. Then in terms of processing on the rest of the open hi-hats, what I've done is remove a ton of the lows to kind of just keep that nice hi-hat, hi open uh, hi-hat sound, kind of keep that high-end preserved. Then I ran it into a list one knob transient designer, tucked in the sustain a little to tighten up all of the hi-hats a little bit. So a little bit tighter sounding, oh, wrong track. And then I have this one knob saturation, applying to all of them, kind of gluing these together a little bit and adding in a bit of fullness. And again, this is these are more of these kind of one knob racks that are available in the project files and links in the description. And if you want me to make a video on how I made these two, I'd be happy to do that as well. So the next thing that I added in was these hi-hats. This is a look at the pattern. Usually when I'm doing this, uh, I believe I started with this, the layer that's highlighted right here, um, kind of copying that open hi-hat pattern and then slowly over time adding in some extra hi-hat sounds to kind of add that groove and that shuffle. And then usually doing something where I'll usually work in the first bar or the first two bars to create the initial kind of groove or loop. Then I'll duplicate it over and make some slight adjustments so there's like a little bit of a call and response kind of happening. So the idea here again was flipping back and forth between this and the reference track. To get the right sounds and to pick the right volumes and to kind of try to get the right pattern there as well. In terms of the processing, I uh, got rid of a bunch of the lows and high shelves out a little bit of the top to kind of mix it in a little bit. And I used the one knob transient designer to reduce the attack a bit to again kind of smoothen things out a little bit and then also reduce the sustain a bit to kind of tighten up the sound. And then just a little bit of one knob saturation using Ableton Saturator to fill out the sound a little bit more and add some kind of grit and character. The next thing I added in was this clap. So let me open that up and play it. So this is a look at the MIDI. It's kind of standard where you'd expect things to go. Uh, it's happening on the two and the four, two and the four. And again, main thing was choosing the sounds and flicking back and forth between the reference track to try to find the right sounds, make sure the pattern was in the right places and to make sure the volumes are correct. So let's go ahead and do that. That's kind of the idea there. In terms of the sounds here, what I did do is if I dig into the simpler, I have one panned a little bit to the left, as you can see here, and then the other one here, if you move from sample to controls, you can see that I have one panned a little bit to the right, so it's kind of creating a width kind of effect. And then also if you look, the volume here is negative 11 on the one on the right, and the one on the left is negative 12, so again, it's kind of balancing out while I'm looking back and forth like this. 
to get the right sound and make sure the volume is correct. Then for both of the claps, it's running into this kind of standard channel strip that I always have going on, removing a bunch of the lows, uh, tightening up the sustain a little bit, shortening everything, tightening things up, and then a little bit of one-up saturation to uh, fill up the sound a little bit. Next thing that I added was the snare, so let's go ahead and have a listen to that. Bring up the volume so you can hear it nice. So having a look at the pattern here, what I started with was this one snare here that's just kind of reinforcing the clap. So it's happening on the two and the four and the two and the four. And then what I did was slowly kind of listening back and forth between this and the reference track, added these little flourishes, kind of that cool shuffle, jack and kind of sound. So let's go ahead and flick back and forth between this and the reference track. So pretty subtle stuff. Um, and that's kind of what I landed on there. Uh, again, kind of trying to go for a call and response kind of idea here. So um, first bar is slightly different than the second bar. So there's a little bit of that cool call and response, which is really important to house music and kind of keeps things interesting and dynamic. In terms of the, any kind of other processing on here, um, what we have is the standard channel strip, but in this case, we're just removing some of the lows at 261 Hertz to just kind of um, make sure that it's not taking up too much of the low end, um, keeping that the low end nice and safe for the kick and the sub and all that kind of stuff. So once these initial uh, kind of sounds are done, um, I guess the next thing I did add was this palm. Bring up the volume and let me listen to it. So this, if we listen back to the reference track, I feel like it's slightly in there. I went for a little bit more pronounced sound. Again, this is the idea is, like I mentioned in previous videos, is to start with the reference track to kind of build it up and follow the volumes and the sound selection to get that professional sound, but then just start taking things in a new direction at a certain point to kind of make it unique and your own. So what I did was just feel like I heard this in the tune um, and I just found it like I looked up Brave Tom I believe is what I looked up and just kind of ended up on this pattern here um, and then nestled it in with the volume automation jumping back and forth between the macro tune and then in terms of any other processing uh, using this channel strip once again removing some of the lows but bringing it back a little bit further uh, at 130 hertz instead of usually it's around 200 hertz so there's a little bit more of that low end of the tom coming through and then just um, uh, a little bit of one knob saturation to fill up the sound a little bit. Then usually what I'll do is add in a couple of different tops layers to kind of add some groove and some character. And so let's start off with the first one that I added, which was these shakers. And so this, if we listen back to reference track, I feel like there's kind of maybe a 16th hat or some kind of shaker, and that's kind of the idea that I was going for here. So let's have a listen to the reference. And then ours. So a lot more subtle, I would say, and um, kind of mixed in a little bit. I just flicked up some kind of shaker on splice. And then in terms of any sound processing, rolling off a bunch of the loads, but I think it was already rolled off in the sample anyways. And we have the one knob side chain, so I don't have to map it to a compressor and a kick and all that kind of stuff. It's just built in on one knob there to kind of add that groove and that pumping sound. And then this one knob with a uh, plugin as well, which is a free plugin, but I just mapped it to macros to make things easier. We're just kind of making more of a stereo sound for the shakers, pushing them to the left and right, uh, making room in the middle for all the other important stuff. Next up is this next tops line that I added. So this is mixed in quite a bit and I did have to go into this one or what I looked up was just drum uh, breaks on splice. I did have to go in and kind of uh, drop uh, warp markers and kind of tighten up the sound. It was a little bit too loose so I did have to come in here and do some manual editing and then what I did was I switched the and um, I switched this uh, little drop down thing to transients over here and then tighten up the sound so it's just kind of tightening up the transients and making it a little bit more, mixing it in a little bit more so that like, the decay isn't as long so it kind of fits into the drum loop a little bit. Other than that, some processing I did was remove some of the lows like usual and drop some of the highs. Uh, once some one knob side chain and some one knob saturation. And then I also have this one slightly uh, 
and pan to the left because I have another drum sound here that we'll listen to next. And so to kind of look at the mini, this one too, I did have to come in and add some extra warp markers to kind of tighten it up a little bit. And then I also adjusted the transient uh, changes to this mode here and then brought it down a little bit to also tighten it up as well. In terms of any processing, just removing some of the lows, some one upside check, some one upside chain, and some one up saturation, and adding a little bit of width with the, with the wider plugin. And this one is uh, panned a little bit to the right. So other than that, there are these little fills that I added here. Got a cool little roll kind of sound. I uh, just found something interesting. It's a little bit more of an arrangement trick, so I won't go too into it. But I will show you this next part over here, which is this ride sound. <laughs> so what I did is I have one ride penned to the left, and um, just like a 909 ride half high uh, sound. And basically, just a cool way that you can kind of add some energy throughout your tracks. Maybe the first 16 bars, there's no rides, and then the second uh, 16 bars, you add in the ride. Uh, just a way to kind of build up some of the energy. But yeah, that's kind of a look at the drums. Kind of get into more of that, like, every 16 bars changing up the sounds in the arrangement video, which should come in a couple days or a week or so. Uh, but yeah, let's look at the drums for this track. All right, all right, all right. So now let's take a look at the bass. So. What we're listening to right now is the drums with the bass just by themselves. And now let's have a listen to the bass just by itself for a moment. And so the main thing that I want to show you here is I do have the Mal P B to the Underground track in here as a reference track. I've turned it off and I set it up so that when I press the S key, it's going to solo it by itself. So I can go like this. This is the reference. And then this is ours. So the idea here is, I mentioned in other videos, but the idea is to flick back and forth between the reference so that you can select the right pattern. So choose the right MIDI notes, make sure that that's correct by flicking back and forth. You can make sure that the sound design and the sound selection is right by mixing back and forth. And you can also mix back and forth to set the volume of your bass to be the correct way. And this is really gonna be that 80-20 rule to make your track sounding super duper professional. It's gonna be another trick that we're gonna talk about in a minute because this is a good way to replicate, but we do wanna innovate as well. But to start things off, here's a look at the MIDI notes that uh, I landed on here. Um, it's kind of a pretty basic pattern, I would say. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't really know any too music theory stuff, but have a look at the pattern here and, and see if you can find anything. But this is basically, again, just flip back and forth and slowly pick the right notes. I also looked on Beatport to find the key of the song and then set the scale to it over here so that it kind of limited the selection of notes to make things a little bit easier. Then when it comes to the bass sound design, there's a couple of little tricks that I do want to show you here. So inside of this bass group, I have two uh, MIDI, uh, MIDI tracks here. And the first one is this sub sound. So let me just pause that so you can hear that by itself. You're definitely gonna wanna have probably headphones on this to hear this, but usually what I like to do is a little trick, is I like to have my subs on a separate MIDI track, and there's two reasons for that. One is it's very similar to, say if you're kind of using a piano or a guitar, a very basic sound, you can use that to kind of just focus on getting the notes down very, very correctly without getting too bogged down in sound design or having the sound design kind of color your ear as you're selecting the right notes. You can really drill down on making sure the notes are correct. Second is it will come in handy when you're mixing. So by having a subtrack, you can really focus on that track, taking care of the low end of the track and then having a mid bass track to kind of add in a sound and a character. So with that said, let's take a look at what we have here for the sub bass. And so what we have is this little V sub that I've created. Um, and basically it's just a rack that I made that's using operator and it's mostly just a basic sine wave sound with some uh, options to add in some saturation and some EQ uh, to kind of shape the sound a little bit more but really it's mostly just a sine wave based sound uh, and if you do want this like B sub and if you want access to all these project files there will also be a link in the description to grab this project file 
all my previous track project files and I'm also finishing new track every single week so you'll get access to weekly project files as well. But with that said, I'm just adding a little bit of kind of saturation to kind of fill up the sound and add a little bit of character and so you can kind of hear this stuff a bit more in headphones and crappy laptop speakers and that kind of thing. Uh, and then we are doing a little bit of one knob side chain. So I have a, a side chain shaper here that adds that pumping sound to an LFO or um, the, uh, instead of using like a compressor and mapping it to a kick and all that kind of messy stuff. So you can just do it in one shot, super duper easy. Again, the main thing here is having that sub sound and flicking back and forth between this and the reference like this. Really trying to pay attention to the low end. Then the next thing that I'll usually do is then I'll add in the next track, which is this, this track here. And I'll even solo it for a moment so you can kind of hear what this sounds like on its own. Which sounds like I would say poo on its own, but together it has like a cool, ravey, underground kind of sound. Uh, what I have going on here is you'll notice that there's no MIDI track, so this is a little trick that I like to do. So instead of having the MIDI track on both of these channels, what I'll do is instead I'll have this one and you can click this drop down here instead of all ends, select it to the sub track. And this is going to make it so that the MIDI on this track will automatically route into this track here. So if you make any changes to the MIDI as you're building out your tracks, you won't have to control C, control V, or command B, control all that copy and paste crap a million times to get everything corrected. It's just automatically going to route in, which adds a lot of flexibility in the songwriting uh, process, I would say. And just clean, makes things a lot cleaner and easier to use as well. Then in terms of the actual sound design, <clears throat> what I'll usually do is have this pitch device here. So that way, if you run into the, the chance where, say, the sub note sounds really good at a certain octave, but then that octave doesn't sound as good on the mid bass layer, you can easily adjust it. So you can see here that I had to pitch it up 12 semitones or an octave above the sub. Then what I have is this uh, bass guitar sound, which I grabbed and sampled from the Trillion DSC, which I think is amazing, but also has a lot of load, CPU load, and takes a while to load up, basically. So I basically sampled it and created dropped it into a sampler here at different pitch intervals so it sounds kind of nice and clean. Uh, adding a little bit with the circuit SMP, a little bit of drive here to kind of add some saturation, fill the sound a little bit, add some extra character and that kind of grit. And then I did play with the, uh, the decay and the sustain a little to tighten up the sound a bit against the sound of the sub. Other than that, main thing when you are working with uh, individual sub versus a mid bass, uh, you're going to want to have an EQ on the mid bass and kind of get rid of a bunch of the low end. So in this instance, I have uh, removed 200 hertz. Um, everything above 200 hertz is remaining. Everything below 200 hertz is gone. And that kind of keeps space for the sub to really take care of the low end. So that way the mid bass is just taking care of the, making, taking care of the character and the, the sound and the grit and all that. Then what I have is this transient shaper, which is a free transient shaper. Just maps some of the, um, the common knobs here. So I'm using a bit of this, removing some of the sustain to kind of, again, tighten up the sound again. And then I'm running it into a one knob sidechain as well to kind of get that pumping effect and make room for the kick. Um, again, this stuff here is like a channel strip that I use in every single one of my tracks, the kind of custom build that I've created. If you want access to again, this as well, it will be a link in the description to get all the project files, racks, and all that kind of stuff. So that kind of really is a look at the bass. Then we're just routing it into this group track here. Uh, the compressor and saturation is off. I have it there just in case I do want to kind of play with those things. Other than that, I'm running into a K clip. Uh, and I think about, is it four decibels? Mm, barely anything here. Just leaving it on here just in case it does go above zero. I uh, can kind of take care of that. What I do want to do mention though is as a more or less a look at the recreation of the Mount P sound and bass, at least my interpretation of it. But then I have built out this full track here. So if I go back here, what I did was kind of changed up the sound or, or not the sound, but rather the, the MIDI to make it a little bit more unique. So it's kind of going for the same vibe. but it's a little bit different. And this is something I would recommend you do as well. You know, if you're working against a reference track, always use it as a starting point. Really focus in on it to get the, select the right sounds, the right patterns, and most importantly, to get the right volumes against the reference track so that you can have that shortcut to a really polished sound. But at certain points, you're gonna wanna make creative changes, change up the notes, make it your own. So that way it's not just a carbon copy of the original tune and you can evolve it into your own track. And that's exactly what I did here. 
Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So in this one, we're going to have to do a little bit more jumping around than normal because in the Malfi song, there's a lot of like layers that come in and out over the course of the tune. The first one we're going to go over is this kind of siren. You can hear this in the reference track. And let's add it in here right now. So again, main thing when developing these kind of tracks, I recommend having the reference track in as kind of step one of the 80-20 rule there. Setting it up so that the track is off and then when you press the S key, you can flick back and forth. And this is gonna allow you to very easily select the right sounds, make sure your notes are correct. And one of the biggest things is gonna be adding, um, making sure the volumes are correct. That's gonna be the fast track sounding really professional tunes setting your volumes correctly against a reference track. So for this sax siren sound, just playing this one long B sharp kind of note here. And then what I did was I just found, um, I looked up Brave Siren in uh, Splice and looked at the right key and found this sound. And this is the loop that's playing. And I dropped this into simpler. And what I did is I have it so it starts at the beginning. So it has that cool like rise sound. And then set the warp on here and set it to loop and then adjusted this um, the, the loop start percentage here so that it could, once the initial bit plays then it'll start looping back and forth that way it'll go over the course of that that sound then what I did after that it's added in a shifter effect and then automated in the um, the fine tuning to kind of I think you can kind of hear that in the reference track as well, but I played with it a little bit more as I started to start from the reference track and slowly made it my own unique track. Other than that, I'm running it into this effect rack from Sound Toys. It's just a pan man setting that I adjusted, um, kind of moving the sound a little bit off the right a bit. And then it's running into this A1 trigger gate, which is free. And what I do every once in a while, you can see here, I dial in the mix kind of get that stutter house effect and just kind of automated it throughout the track. That's definitely not in the original, just something I like to play with. And then last but not least, running into this channel strip where I'm moving a bunch of the lows, um, using some one knob side chain to kind of pump it and move, uh, add some groove and make room for the kick and the bass. And then also a little bit of one knob Ableton saturation to kind of fill the sound a bit. Um, this is like a channel strip I'll usually have on everything, but it goes on every audio track, every MIDI track and then it's all set up for one knobs so that everything could be easily adjusted quickly. Um, if you want me to make a video on this, let me know and I will. And then also I should mention that there's an additional link in the description to download the project files for this video so you'll be able to steal all these little racks that I make and all that kind of stuff. It also has all the previous project files and I'm also finishing a new song every single week so you get access to that as well. The next thing I added in was the second sound. which is just that higher rave sound. I put it in every once in a while. It's just uh, the same sound. It's an octave higher. Nothing too crazy going on other than that. Um, I think I did also add this one up with to kind of push it to the left and right, add some stereo and make some room in the middle. Then the next thing I added in was this screech sound. And so what this is, I just, I was looking up rave stuff on uh, Splice and ended up finding this. This isn't really in the reference track, it's something I kind of liked and added in. I threw it in on kind of that little off beat sounding kind of bit. And I played with the automations here, or the, the pitch fades. So some are a little tighter and some are a little bit less tight. So you can see the fades here, the fades here, the fades all the way here, the fades here. So just kind of changes the sound a little bit over time, um, kind of tidying it up a little bit. Main thing is then we're running into this channel strip again, we're moving a bunch of the lows, uh, shelving out some of the highs. I find shelving is a nice way to kind of reduce some of the highs without, without it being as harsh as the uh, low pass filter. Then we're running into the one knob transient shaper, pulling back some of the stain, sustain to tighten the sound a bit and then running into the side chain again to pump and groove and make room for the kick and a little bit of drive, able to saturate to build the sound a little bit. If we listen back and forth to the reference track. It's not in there at all, so that was just like a creative decision I made uh, going forward. 
Uh, let's go on to one of the next sounds. So now we're going to do a little bit of jumping around. We'll move to over here. Get this little cloud thing. So again, as I was looking at like kind of rave sounds on Twice, I was just typing that in. I found this cool little clav sound and kind of heard that rhythm and just dropped it in like this. Um, nestled it in quite a bit. Again, this isn't really in a reference track. It's just kind of a cool, kind of, I don't know, underground sounding kind of vibe that I kind of got out of it. In terms of any processing, we are removing the lows as usual, a little bit of side chain, and that's about it. Next up, we have this cool sound. And so that's just like another sample I found on Splice. Uh, it kind of has a cool little vocal bit to it and that kind of um, chord. And originally, I'm gonna drag it out here. It was all this kind of crap. And I kind of just cut a little bit that I liked and then put it into different spots to kind of give it an interesting little kind of groove and character, um, which I think sounds really cool. Again, Flip back to the reference. That's not in there at all. So just kind of another little idea that I kind of got there. Um, so then what I do want to show you is if we do listen back to that reference again, you'll hear the vocals kind of a main part. So at this point, I want to jump over to the vocal bit here and show you what was built out here. So this is pretty important. So in terms of the arrangement right now, I'm kind of, you can see the filter here, dragging this up. So let me just move it to a spot where it's playing all by itself. Not there, it's right here. Probably here. Maybe mm, not, sorry. Try here. Cool. So, what I did again, I looked up um, a vocal on Splice, kind of just cut it up a little bit. Normally, it's, it's that full of voice of the underground, and I just cut it up so it's just the underground. And then on the fourth one, it plays the full amount. So kind of just cut it up, move it into, into different places to kind of get the energy the groove. We listen to the re reference. Main thing. Just trying to get the volumes correct. So I think this reference track, the vocal is louder. But I just say it's close, I would say. Um, so the main thing was just looking up something cool on Splice. And then what we have going on here is this cool little John Alpine. Shout out to my buddy John Alpine in Philadelphia. He gave me this little rack. So it's this cool little Nectar 3 thing. It's doing a little bit of weird pitch. And the pitch is um, the pitch format is Macho and Alpine. So it's just like lightly changing the vocal. So every once in a while it kind of sounds like deep and weird. And uh, it's kind of interesting, I would say. It kind of makes things a little bit more interesting. And this is running into a Sound Toys effect track. Uh, with a bunch of different filter freak kind of uh, sounds that I found and um, just dialed in the mix quite a bit. This is killing the CPU, so I'm going to take that out. It's going to add a little bit more of a gritty character if I turn it off. It's louder, but it's a lot cleaner. So I like kind of like the weird, kind of more underground gritty texture there. Then running into the same channel strip as usual, we're removing a bunch of the lows. And then I do have um, a low pass filter that gets automated and kind of moves things around. A bit of an arrangement trick, so it kind of fades it in, but then also once in a while moving it, so it's just kind of adding some character and changing things up. Then we have uh, one some one knob side chain, pumping, giving some groove, a little saturation to fill up the sound a little bit, and a little bit of width to push things to the left and right and uh, kind of make things more stereo. And I felt like this wasn't quite enough, so if you listen to the original, it sounds like there's a lot more going on there, and this wasn't cutting it. So what I added was a couple extra, extra bits. So I have this one. 
cool little drop. Let's do it one more time. So again, just looked up some cool ravey sounds, vocals on splice, and then moved it to a position, not starting on the one, kind of uh, playing around with it, kind of got a cool little vibe out of it. Uh, in terms of the processing, not much going on here. We're moving a little bit of the lows, uh, making sure there's no muddy stuff there. A little bit of one knob side chain, so it's pumping a little bit. That's really it. Then I still felt like that wasn't enough, so then I added one more layer, which is this one. Listen to it one more time. So some of them says feel all right, and some of them just it says feel it. Like that, and then feel all right. Boom. So I feel like Mappy does this in a few tracks as well. Kind of cutting up different vocal bits and that kind of thing. Uh, and that's kind of the vibe I was going for. Fills it out a little bit more in terms of any processing. Um, what we have here is removing some of the lows, and I do have another one of these high pass filters. Again, fil filtering it in, it's an arrangement trick um, throughout the track. Um, other than that, we do have an echo that is part of an arrangement trick. It echoes it out during one of the breakdowns. We'll get to that in the arrangement video. Other than that, we're just doing some one off side chain. That's about it. And I do have a bit of um, returns on here, a little bit of reverb, a little bit of short delay, and a little bit of long delay. I'll show what it looks like over here. We have reverb. One trick I'll do is I'll set this decay by multiplying or dividing the BPM by 60,000 so that it's a half note or a quarter note. And then a short delay and a long delay. Um, and that's kind of a look at that. Let's see if there's, and turn that off. Sometimes double vocals can kind of sound weird and funky. Um, then something else that I did add was this additional synth layer. So this is actually from the this layer here. If I just pause this, this little cool thing that I showed a bit earlier. There's also this like more full chord that happens. And so I cut that out and put it into its own little area and then added this interesting kind of cool stabby, ravey kind of rhythm and just kind of cut it up and put it into different areas. I made it so that some of the notes are longer and some of them I cut up a bit shorter. Um, just kind of makes it so much interesting and different, I guess you could say. Um, and that's a cool little groove to things. Um, so that's the same idea, just cut up that sample and cut it into different little slices there and move it into different areas. In terms of processing, just removing some of the lows and a little bit one up side chain, that's just about it there. Uh, in terms of anything else going on here, um, I do also have a few different synths playing in the bridge. So move over to the bridge. So we have this little bridge sound here. It's cool, it's kind of polyrhythmic. And so basically added it in here. And then I have, as you can see here, we're slowly building in the filter. So it's slowly being automated. And it's a little bit more of an arrangement thing, but I do want to show this too. Because then when the song fully kicks in here, Cool and in there and sick, I would say. <laughs> uh, with the vocal, this is what the main drop sounds like. Fully filtering into vocal. Boom. And then there's also, and a couple more things I want to show you here is this other synth. Nestled in there quite a bit. Um, maybe just kind of get a loop going of this one. So what this is, let me bring it up. So it's negative 12, I'll remember that. What this is, is I'm using Synplant 2 and I'm using kind of AI. And what I did is there's this thing called channel patch. And what I did was that synth that I showed just a bit earlier, kind of this, this chord stab here. That, that cool sound. I cut this and I dropped it into Synplant and it used AI to recreate it. And so we hear that. The sound, listen. Is this is what Synplant came up with. 
So it's not quite there, but it sounds kind of interesting. And the reason why I wanted that is it's kind of a cool house music technique to, if you're using synthesizers, then you can have like say a tighter sound so the decay or the release is a lot tighter. And then you slowly open that up. Um, either as a way to like slowly add some interest and energy, but it's a cool like bridge or build up kind of technique to slowly open up that release and that decay. And so I wanted to kind of get that vibe, but I was using a sample. So I dropped the sample at the synth plant to kind of get a similar sound. And then basically we open up some of the um, uh, automation here. You can see just slowly bringing up, there's an effect on synth plant, which is you do some kind of like delay and that kind of reverb kind of stuff. So at the beginning it's a lot tighter and it's slowly adding it in. And you can see over here, the release of the synth is slowly being brought up as well. In addition to that, usually when I'm using Synthland, I'll usually run it into a, the Spectral Resonator. And the reason I like to run it into that is because if I turn this off, you really hear that, listen to this sound. This is that Synthland sound without Spectral Resonator. And then with it, So what I like about this is with Spectral Resonator on, you can set the mode to MIDI and then you can choose which MIDI you want it to come from. So I have it coming from itself. And then this way, what I have is like this D sharp note that's playing at the same locations as that previous chord stab was. And so that way this D sharp at these specific times, whoops, <laughs> um, is then happening in the Spectral Resonator so that the, it's kind of forcing synth plant to be in tune. And then also there's kind of these, uh, this decay knob here. And so I'm able to also kind of tighten it up by having a shorter decay and then uh, automating the decay to get louder and opening it up. So it kind of has that effect as well. So that's just a kind of cool little extra thing as well. Um, and then, and other than that, a little bit of standard channel strip processing, removing some of the lows. Uh, I've tightened up the sustain, and then you can see I've automated it at some point too to fill it out more and open it up. And we have some one-knob side chain, so it's pumping and you can move the kick. And then a little bit of this one-knob whip, pushing to the left and right, making more stereo. And then the last thing I want to show you is this: is a pad. And let's get listen to it for a second. Just playing kind of a triad there. Basic chord. And this is just coming in uh, during the breakdown and some of these other breakdowns. Um, it's kind of filling up the sound a little bit more and adding some interest. Uh, something I like to usually do. And then in terms of the sound, using this Noctua Venus Theory workstation thing, just found a cool preset that's used in cool, cool, cool pad sounds in that. Uh, removing some of the lows and then removing a bunch of the highs and filtering in the filtering the highs so that if we have this play, you can see as like an arrangement production trick. Well, we'll go more into the arrangement in the future video, but it's slowly opening it up so you can hear more and more of the pad as kind of a build-up effect. And then a little bit of one up side chain, a little bit of one up saturation, a little bit of one up width. And I think that's a pretty good look at everything. All right, all right, all right. So before we do a full kind of walkthrough of the arrangement, there's a couple things I want to point out. So first is like normal, I have the actual Mal P beats for the underground reference track in here. So this is useful for while building up the track, but it's also nice because I was able to create these arrangement, this arrangement track up at the top to indicate where the intro is, where the sub comes in, the break, the drop, and all that. In this particular project, you'll see that there's two. So this is an actual full breakdown of this Mal P beats from the underground track. Main thing is when I was building it, there's usually this like a, Let's say this is probably 32 bars of um, is that? yeah 32 bars of uh, of a drop followed by an extra like eight bars and I wasn't really digging that when I was building up my own track so I ended up removing that so you'll see here in my final version it's just this 32 bars for the drop 32 bars for the break 32 bars for the drop whereas in Malpe's track it's 32 bars plus an additional uh, eight bars here. Um, so I have this separate so you can kind of see what the original track was, but again, I, as I'm usually talking about this stuff, I think it's a good idea to start by referencing the track 
and then slowly break off and make your own unique ideas. And that's what happened here. So this is a look at the actual reference or the actual structure of this Malpe track. In addition to that, main thing there is to build out reference tracks and these arrangement tracks. So it's very easy once you build out the track horizontally. So the loop. Once you have an arrangement track, it's a lot easier to kind of copy things over and build out the track following this arrangement track. And that's how I was able to arrange this within maybe 15 to 20 minutes because of that. Uh, other than that, we're going to kind of go through the rest of the track. These larger changes, as indicated by the arrangement track up at the top, or what I would consider a macro transition, larger changes like a verse to a chorus, those kinds of things. And then we're also going to be paying close attention to micro transitions. So little things like what you just heard there, the kick being pulled out and a little fill happening or little lasers or risers and all those kind of things that really make a track interesting and dynamic and change over time. So what we'll do next is we're going to go through this, um, just let the track play and I'll kind of give a commentary through everything. I'll try to solo things as I can and all that. And if you want access to this project file, there'll be an additional link in the description to get access to this complete project file so you can steal the samples and all the racks that I built and you'll get all the previous project files and I'm also finishing a new track every week and you'll be able to get access to that as well. So with that said, let's jump into this. We're starting off with the first 16 bars of the intro. This is mainly for the uh, drum, the DJ to be able to uh, mix in. So starting off with some kick, some of the um, the drum elements in the second half here, the 16, uh, the 16 bars, this 8 bar bit, we added in this hi-hat element here. And we have this uh, screech coming in just a little bit. And now a little fill into the first macro transition, which is where the sub comes in. At this point, we have the claps and the snares have been added. All the pops have been added as well. And the bass has been added. And we have this like siren playing, as well as the screeches is happening on a more frequent basis. Then it breaks into this little quick break here over the course of eight bars. First half of it at the kick, second half of it we remove the kick, kind of reduce the energy, as well as the toms and the shakers have been removed. And we have a little kind of riser building into that crash. So now we're in the first drop. And we have all the drums in, and the bass is playing, and we're slowly filtering in this vocal here. As well as this one here, that little laser sound happening. Again, you can see four bars and another laser sound there. And now we're going to have a reverse crash going into the crash here. We're just going to go into uh, a larger break. So for the breaks, very common. Just as you can see here, remove the kick to really drop the energy down. In the first half, we have the open hat hat gone. In the second half of it, we're going to add in the open hi hat to increase the energy. And we're slowly playing around with this siren. Second half of it, we also added in this clav kind of sound. And we're gonna do like a drop out. You can see here, all of them drops out as a micro transition. You know? Really adds an emphasis so that you're taking away as much as possible right before the drop comes in to really make that more empowering. So now we're in on this drop. And what we have here is almost all of these synths are playing. And we have vocals slowly fading in. We have a lot more vocals playing. Drop it and feel all right. And then we have a little, a little reverse crash. This crash, second half of it, we're going to add in this ride. What's all that? 909 ride is a nice way to add in some additional energy over the course of your drop. And what I did is the first half of it, we have one ride pinned to the left, and then we're going to add an additional ride. And this one's pinned to the right. It's kind of filling out the stereo spectrum. We're going to go into the, this next break. So a micro transition. We're going to drop up the kick for a second. Ooh, I do want to pull it back, even though it's this cool like radio effect. Did you listen? The kick for the first bit, there's a high pass. And then it's fully removed. Little trick there. And then for this large break, it's going to go over the course of 32 bars. This kick is in for the first bit of it, and it has been uh, high passed so that a little bit of the lows are removed. And what I've done here is. I'm going to do a little bit more pausing on this one because there's a couple of tricks that I do want to show you. So if we go back to this, that feel all right. You'll notice over here, there's this echo. The echo comes in on just in the end here. 
with the feedback on quite high, and that's kind of creating that cool echo trail there. So then what we have here is, after that first bit of eight bars, we're adding in the vocals. It's gonna be slowly filtering in here. Can't hear it yet. We've also added in the ride on the first bit. We're gonna add in the second ride after this, this eight bar section. We have this um, one that has been introduced as a pad that's being slowly filtered in as well. And we have this huge sweep adding in here. An additional one here as well, slowly adding in more and more. Uh, we also have this synth lamp that I mentioned in the previous video. It's slowly adding the, the release to it and the effect. So if we go over here, you can see the decay is being slowly added, so it's kind of swelling the sound more and more. The riser's doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, and we did a pause here, so the last eight bars is no drums, and a little pause right. And now we're in the last drop here. So at this point, I've added in an additional drum layer here, this right here. This only shows up at this part, kind of make the last drop a little bit more impactful. Ooh, and also I should mention I kind of went for a re-space sound here. So a little bit more jumping around than I normally do, but let's listen to this. In the break here, listen to the bass. Same bass, but it's been filtered. And then in the second half, it's just playing one note. So let's listen back to that again. So the bass has been filtered out, so this it's not as subby and, and whatnot, but it's still playing that same rhythm. Kind of cool, progressive house kind of sounding vibe there. And then it can really take a good effect here in the second half when the drums pop out. And then I do want to show the master track here as well. What we have going on here is I have this endless smile plugin and I've mapped it to these one knobs with different effects so I can slowly apply it to the whole master to kind of add that airy reverb sound. And then, yeah, so now we're just in the last drop. So the vocals come, we've added that extra minimal uh, drum layer in here, and the uh, vocals be slowly filtered in. You can hear after the first eight bars, we added one of the rides again to increase the energy. And after this eight bar section, we're gonna make another change, add in the ride again. Reverse crash into a crash with a like a down top of the kind of noise sound. So you can see here almost every four bars, every eight bars or so, there's some kind of layer of sound or something to kind of change things up a little bit. Crash on this one. Noise uplifter and a like a kind of sweet sound going to the next section with a little high pass goes on the kick, then kick for the move. And now we're on the build down. This is a point where the drop, the DJ can potentially mix out. We're trying to slowly build the energy down. So the rides are gone and the vocals are gone. Other than every once in a while, there's a little bit of this feel all right bit in the first eight bars. And that little swell of the, of the reverse crash into that kind of like clavy kind of sounding laser sound. Slowly removing the elements until we get to the point here which is just the outro, which is very similar to the intro. Um, just drums mostly for the DJ to be able to mix out. What we have in the first few bars is some of this clav and that kind of like vocal sound. In the last eight bars, we remove it. And also the kick has been uh, high pass so that it's not as subby and full. So again, the idea is to slowly keep dialing down the energy till we remove it until the end. Boom. And that's a look at it. So there's quite a bit going on. I did my best to kind of explain everything as going through it. If you do want access to the product files, there will be a link to it in the description. Again, might be a good way, particularly to have a look at all the little intricacies that are happening throughout the track if you want to look into it yourself. But hopefully this video was helpful and does give you a stronger idea of how to build out your own arrangements in this way. Hello again, my friend. Hopefully you found that video useful. If you'd like to follow along yourself with the five step song finishing checklist, there will be a link in the description below where you can get access to that completely for free. And it's going to help you finish your songs a lot faster and better than ever before.
If you found this video useful, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But really the best thing I can do for you is hook you up with that free checklist. So make sure you check that one. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video, my friend. Have a good one.